So we say that a couple has been suffering from infertility when they are unable to conceive even after a year of trying to get pregnant. Infertility can be because of various causes. One third of the time it is because of certain female factors, one third of the time because of certain male factors and in some cases it can be both the male and the female factors having a role to play. In today's video, we will be discussing about the female factors that can cause infertility. So if this is something that you would like to know more about, definitely watch the video till the end. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zainab Tajit. I am a homeopathy consultant and psychological counsellor from Pune. I create videos around physical health, emotional wellness, hormonal balance and homeopathy. And if you fancy this kind of content, do consider subscribing to my channel. So when it comes to falling pregnant, there are so many factors that play a role that has to happen in order for you to conceive. Now, in order for you to get pregnant, it's very important for you to ovulate every month. That egg needs to be picked up by the fallopian tube and needs to enter inside the fallopian tube. At the same time, the sperm needs to swim up the cervix and the uterus into the fallopian tube and fertilize that egg. The egg that then needs to come down into the uterus and needs to implant itself into the uterus for the baby to start developing. There are so many factors that can go wrong in this entire process and that is what we'll be discussing in today's video. So the first thing that can go wrong here is ovulatory disorders. If you do not ovulate regularly, it can result into infertility. One of the primary reasons that can happen is because of PCOS. PCOS is one of the most common issues that women today suffer from and that can result into hormonal imbalance and estrogen dominance that prevents ovulation from happening. Also, it results into various other symptoms like insulin resistance, obesity, hirsutism, etc. and somewhere everything interferes with your infertility. The second cause can be premature ovarian failure or POF. So basically, this is an autoimmune disorder where your eggs start destroying at a very early age and can be one of the causes of infertility. The third thing can be because of hypothalamic dysfunction. So a hypothalamus is this small area of the brain that releases two primary hormones that is FSH and LH that cause ovulation every month. Now excessive physical or emotional stress, losing or gaining weight very fast can all put stress onto your hypothalamus and disrupt the release of these two hormones which can result into ovulatory disorders and lastly prolactin levels when increased can also cause dysfunction and can result into ovulatory functions so these are the primary reasons why your ovulation might not happen correctly and it might be difficult for you to conceive now, the second cause is tubal infertility, that is, is issues related to your fallopian tube. One of the primary issues is blockage in your fallopian tube that can be caused because of PID, that is pelvic inflammatory disorder, which is an infectious disorder which can cause blockages there and scarring. Or if you've had an abdominal surgery because of any reason or for an ectopic, usually these surgeries also cause scarring of the fallopian tube and can cause blockage because of which the sperm cannot reach the egg and the egg cannot come out of the fallopian tube and that can cause infertility. The third reason can be endometriosis. So endometrium is the tissue that grows inside the uterus but in some cases this endometrium can grow outside of the uterus into different places and it can cause infertility because when this endometrium grows in different places such as the fallopian tube it can cause scarring of the fallopian tube and it can disrupt your hormones which can also contribute to your infertility. Then we have uterine and cervical causes. So usually when there are any malformations of your uterus since birth, it can cause infertility because it makes your uterus unable to conceive or retain your pregnancy. Secondly, benign tumors or fibroids in the uterus usually when located at unusual places such as near the opening of the fallopian tube or blocking the cervix etc. These can again prevent the sperm from entering into the uterus and reach the fallopian tube in order for you to conceive. Usually there are so many women who have very small polyps and fibroids and can still get pregnant. This is not a very important cause. So this is not something that can happen with every individual who has a fibroid. Secondly, it can be because of cervical stenosis. So cervical stenosis means the opening of the cervix is very small, which can again contribute to infertility. 
and sometimes the cervix does not produce the mucus that is needed for the sperm to swim up into the uterus. So when this cervical mucus is not produced well, again that can result into infertility. And now having discussed these common causes, there is also something that is called as unexplained infertility. So in some couples, in spite of all the tests and having no pathological problems, they still are unable to conceive and it can be because of certain minor things in the male or the female. Now in such cases, lifestyle changes become very important. So depending on your cause of infertility, the treatment might vary. It can be cured with medications or might require surgery. But one of the primary things that you need to take care of, especially when trying to conceive, is to make sure that your lifestyle is on point. So always making sure that you are eating well in terms of having a balanced meal, which contains a good amount of proteins, carbs and fibers, making sure that you are drinking enough water, exercising regularly and adapting techniques that can help you in managing your stress will only improve your chances of conceiving and help you in getting pregnant faster. So I genuinely hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And thank you so much for sticking by till the end. I will see you again next week.